so in this one we're going to do something a little bit different and we're going to travel a little bit backwards and we're going to talk about surviving day one and pretty much setting yourself up to survive the rest of the time being i'm still on my uh island from the original story it's just right now we're just going to take it back a little bit and explain why and how i actually survived the islands or how i, how I survived each beach and make sure that i'm good to go wherever i need to go off of each beach not every beach has the um we're just gonna jump into it right now as i'm talking not every beach has trees and fruits and vegetables i've seen a few with just stone and you got to make do so i'm coming to the conclusion that not every map you're supposed or not every beach you're supposed to sit on and rest on and build but when i seen this one i know with everything on it all the wood and the vegetation on it is definitely survivable and the first thing i would do when i jump on here is i would look for the stones because it's going to help you make your tools moving forward like a small rock that can turn your carbon rock with three hits into a hammer one of the first things you need i personally i'd go for the hatchet or even the knife the uh, axe stone i would but i would technically go for the knife because the knife can still cut down certain woods now what you would need to do at that point is run around and look for sticks because it's not like you have a hatchet to tear anything down and you see on these rocks we got seagull feathers so we're going to want those as well but right now we're going to just go looking for some sticks because i mean when you first jump on you're healthy your vitals are all together everything's still intact so you don't really need to worry about food or anything other than finding things that are going to allow you to last so let me dig in here you got to find a stick I'd say always stay on the outside of it first. I mean, going on the inside is cool, but it's going to tempt you to a lot of things. And we're not finding a stick. But we're definitely going to try to avoid this here area because we've already put work on there. Let's go back a little bit. Let's see. We got everything over here but sticks. So now we're back the other way, looking on this side of the island for sticks. And if there's no sticks on the outside, you're going to have to go in. Normally, when you first jump on a the map, there's sticks on the outside of that. Ah, there we go. That's what we want, one of these. Is there any, any more? No, that's not a stick. That's a leaf. It fell for the okie doke. All right. So let's just get back to our little area. Some bananas that are pretty much ready to go bad. Oh yeah, spotted bananas, spoiled bananas, spoiled. Well, we're gonna have to leave those there and let those spoil. Or we'll be carrying those for nothing. And right now we have no use for spoiled bananas. So they'll be there the whole time. So just getting back to our little starter area, what we first want to do is craft into our crafting tab to open up the crafting, go to tools, and bang, your hatchet. And it'll automatically put the stick in there. We have our stone blade in the number two slot. Uh, yeah, we will need a hammer for that, so we have to make the hammer first off. See, bad mistakes on my part. But we do have all of these stones we just got on this island so we still have what we need to get one of those carbon stones out of it uh, first hit but what that means is we got to run around looking for another stick so we'll bring you back once we find that stick uh, so yeah i think coming in these woods we're gonna have to try to find a stick here we go stick in these woods let's try to find another one just in case no it's not one sticking out of the ground why would, a, why would a stick be sticking out of the ground? Silly. Alright. Is there another one in here? There's another one in here. There's one. Alright, so we got two sticks now. What we need to do is get the hammer so we can make the hatchet. How dare us be silly enough to forget that. Small carbon rock. Alright, so... You can also hold C for crafting, which will bring up the quick uh, quick craft. 
place down the hammer, put down the stick, and we just need a carving rock. Okay, where is that rock? Number one. Three hits again. Put that in there. Now we can actually use a rock and put this together. That's in our two slot. There's our hammer. Pick up our hammer. Make our hatchet. And, or our pickaxe, perimeter pickaxe. And now we're ready to uh, take on this beach island. But we need one more thing to do that because we need to be able to pick up things. So what we need to do is chop down this tree. Hopefully it doesn't have any ripe coconuts. Okay, it has no co coconuts at all. They just dropped not too long ago. If you see that tiny little budding one, it means that it'll be a while before there's no one. So this one's okay to chop down in my books. Because we need it for a bed. We need it for our bag. We need it for our, our belt. And we need it for our little small bag. As well as we need it for a shelter. So this got to come down. And it's not affecting us because it's not bearing no fruit. Now, if you walk up and where it says palm front and it says 500, just hit that if you want the palms right away. Because right now we don't technically need the logs. We need this. So we have palm fronds. Now the next thing we're going to do is get ourselves a bag. So go to equipment. And this is just a small crate that doesn't go on your body. It's something to help you store your stuff. We want this one. We want this one. And we want that one. No, we don't want that one. We want that belt. So that's going to take a knife. That's going to take a knife. And that's going to take a knife, which means we need another stone and another stick, which is why we're lucky. It's smart enough to get more than one stick. So let's go over here, get ourselves a stone. Can we get a stone? Yeah, we can get a stone. All right. Same old rock. Let's see how much. There we go. Now this one we're going to have to smack a little bit more times because we need to break it down to a knife. So let's do this. One, two. And the reason why we want those bags and the belt is because we want to be able to carry a lot of things. We're going to have to go into these woods. We want to find a little bit of food and we want to be able to store some sticks on our hands. Now there's a stone shard for a knife. What we need now is the blueprint. Put that down there. It's going to need a small stick. Alright, so let's get the small stick in there. Bang. Bang. Where is the hammer? One, two. So, we know we have that there. Actually, I'd rather pick that up because I feel like I'll forget where it's at. Get that palm fronds here. So we're going to need to put those into these. That takes one. That takes one. And that takes one. So what I do first is take the knife, since this belt is already created. And hit it ten times. <laughs> and what we pick put push P to where and then with this we need 10 knives as well and P to where now we got a little bit of storage on our body to be able to collect more than enough this is our body our vitamin C is a little bit low our hunger is not it's all right food diversity is all right so we're going to need land and as we go through this I'm going to tell you how I go about my land my seed my fruit as well as my thirst and that all ties up into hunger um, and as long as we are doing things right it will tie into the salt and the vitamin C as well so we got to go find one small stick and give it 10 knives so right now like I said we're surrounded by sticks so we can just take what's this a small okay yeah this is a little baby tree this shouldn't take too much but 500 damage There we go. So we got the one small stick from here. And we go, bada bing. And there's the hand. Oh, yeah, it's the knifing. It's 10 of these. Alright, so now we have that on. 
And now if you notice, we have some weight, we have some storage, we have our tool belt, the side bag. Let's get that out of the side bag. It shouldn't be there. That should be in there. Let's not put nothing in the one slot. Everything's there. All right. So now we have a little bit of uh, baggage. We got some coconuts there. We got some stone. What we really need, that I would say the next step to anything before you do anything, a lot of people would say shelter, where we're at 20% tiredness. Shelter we don't technically need right now. We need to be able to control our food. Because as we noticed when we first walked out, we do have this rock. So seagulls are going to be there. We're going to be able to get seagulls. That's going to be our land supply. They show up every night, and they are, they, they, they literally are loyal. And they drop us these feathers. We might as well pick those up now. But they are faithful, and they are consistent to showing up on this rock just so that we can survive and eat. They are very nice seagulls. Very, very nice seagulls. We want to make sure we survive every map or every island. So we're going to just pick up their feathers because the feathers is what we're going to use to kill them to eat them. So as long as we have that there... We have our land food, so that's good. And we already talked about, like I said, your salt intake. It's at 98 right now. So we have the salt water out there, so obviously we can get salt. We know we can get land food over there from these rocks. The last thing we need to worry about, because like I said, full of vegetation in there. And we got some pineapples there. Or pineapples. <laughs> we have coconuts there. So the last thing we're really going to need is some equipment and a fish net or a fish trap. Put that down. It's going to take one long stick and ten small ones. So we know we chopped down a tree. Where were you? You were only a small one, right here. So we have the long. We have the long ones. We're just going to need seven more small ones. So let's try to chop down a few more trees and get those small, get those small sticks and create our fish trap. And once we get the fish trap down, we're pretty much good for food. We are pretty much good for food. We're just going to need to keep a good amount of salt going. And we're going to need to keep uh, water going, which means the coconuts are going to be our best friend. Rain, catcher, rain, uh, rain catchers and dew catchers are going to be a good, a good friend as well. So that's two right here. Let's get these two out of there. Get that. Five. All right, so we got eight sticks so far. Let's just put them right down by this guy. So yeah, the, the rain and the dew catchers are definitely going to be our friends. The coconuts are going to be our friend. Hopefully, we don't have to go in too deep on the coconuts. But I say make your make yourselves dew catchers. If you're on a map like this, if you don't have the um, the bucket or a cooking pot or even a cup, you're going to want to make two or three because it doesn't give you much with the coconuts. From what I figured out, the coconut is really a sad case of how much they really neglect giving you anything. But we'll move on. Gotta get this last tree for some sticks so we can get this uh, kind of tree of you. And be careful of the tree you cut down. You don't want to cut down a vegetation tree when not supplying you with food. You want it to always re reappear with food. And if food does respond, it just takes a bit of a day, a few days for cycling, like going from uh, a baby or a tiny piece to becoming a full, full budding piece that you can eat. Or even the coconuts where it's small raw coconuts to the point where they become big coconuts. And then there's a difference between the green ones and the brown ones. The brown ones are the best because you get the coconut for food, you get the coconut for water, and you're able to keep the uh, the cup to collect water, to put in your dew collector, to cook food for recipes, as well as the husk for flour for our fires and fire starter as kindling. And we just need one more long stick and we're good. So with this fish trap, it pretty much, even though it doesn't look like it, it pretty much solidifies us for having food. We just got to give it 20 ham rings if we got the uh, strength to do so. Now, once, once we got this done... This is the thing I see so many people make the mistake with. I'm just hoping that this doesn't go off too far. But they want to put it in the water and go for a swim when you don't necessarily have to. As long as it is submerged in water about waist high, that is perfect. Oh, look. A meal, everybody. See? A live, long head turn. Okay. Okay. 
We'll get that in a minute. But that's her fish trap. It's in there. We know where it's at. It's direct. It's not too deep. So we come here on the edge. We can see it here. It'll start collecting fish. When it says 100%, there'll be 10 fish. We'll be able to pull them out, put them on the fire or the smoker, which brings up my next thing that I would do once I get on this map, which is make a fire. Make a campfire and get ready to start cooking and making salt. Because you're going to need to get this tree knocked down and start trying to get our campfire together. Alright, that's what we need. That's exactly what we need. Let's get this all these little sticks out of here. And we'll be using long sticks a lot too. It's just I don't want to use them when I don't have to. Let's just get this over here. Shoot down with that. So for fires, it's going to take a few small fire sticks, and then you can add a few big ones to make it a medium to big fire. Uh, what there it is, our hatch is there. So we just got to smack this like three times. Get three. I usually like to go with nine small sticks, and then try to fill the rest up with the big sticks until it tells me I had enough. And normally, you go into your crafting and tools. You can have an outdoor campfire or an indoor campfire. These indoor campfires are pretty good. They allow you to cook inside so that the, the rain or the weather can't uh, take your fire out. But right now we don't we don't have sources of indoors, so we're gonna go with this and just lay this little campfire down, probably right about there. And then we'll pick up all these almost dry sticks. Let's get these sticks up. One last one. So then we're just gonna apply four, and there's a the small campfire. Now you make the small campfire, just keep adding sticks. So that small campfire is not gonna cook much. And while you're waiting for food to come, that's when I would suggest that the best thing to do at that point is to start. Oh, there you go. Got a big fire. Drop those there. Where are my stones? I know we got some stones around there. Let's go get some stones. Oh, carbon rock. We'll take you. Not the stone we're looking for, but we'll take you. I know I had stones around here. I'm gonna have to go on a beach run for stones already. There's our hammer. <laughs> hammer rock, I should say. Three. Let's see. And now you just you just place them on the campfires if you were cooking them, and they'll lay them down in position for you. And it just allows you to put things around. They can't around the campfire for you to be able to cook on it. Probably just gonna try to find one more rock and go with a four seater. Yeah, there you are. See, on such a big island, everything's all over the place. It's not that hard to find it. Now, the last thing we gotta do here to make sure our fire is working and everything's going is open up a few of these coconuts because we are gonna need them for their bowls and for their uh, the food as well as the water but I think our water's fine and I'd say we got four spots so we'll open up four coconuts so now we just got to open up these bases these base coconuts and I don't want to keep you for opening up coconuts or anything that you know how to do. I'm pretty sure most of us know how to do mostly everything I did do. It just might be the odd little tips or extras that I'm throwing out there that may help. So we just got tired. There's two ways to deal with your tiredness. You can either look at the ground. Well, put this in your bag. You can either look at the ground and hit E and it'll help you regain stamina a lot faster. Now if you look, my hunger is still at 23. My thirst is at 22. We haven't found any food. We do see a leather head down there, but we're not that hungry yet. If you look down at the bottom left here, just down here, bottom left, it'll explain to you when you're tired and when you're hungry. And if you wanted to, you could push you to wait, and that'll just speed up time. But right now, as we're doing this, we don't actually want to speed up time. We just kind of want to get our stamina back. So now we got water there, so we know we can drink water. We know we're not hurting for water. And the good thing about it is just leave them there. After you take out the coconut, or if you even choose to take out the coconut, just leave them there. Because if it rains overnight or if it rains while you're out doing work, it'll collect water for you. And while you're having a problem with water, it'll be there for you. 
Another thing, if uh, if you want to pick something up and not have to actually pick it up and put it in your inventory, or you can't pick it up and actually put it in your inventory, click the right mouse button and it'll allow you to drag things and it's a lot easier to place things in order the way that you want them. See, I don't want these stuck between the mess. And if you scroll the mouse wheel, it'll raise it to you or it will lower it. Like I pick it up there and I'm scrolling the mouse wheel towards me and it's bringing the cup towards me. I push it further away from me and it'll actually push them out the cup away from me. And that's where these are at. They're just laying there. And right now we want to get some dry husk because we're going to need something to start the fire. And with these dry coconut husk, if you want to get... No, we don't want that. Yeah, if you want to get this here, which is great for kindling, coconut fiber, you can't hit it with the uh, with the with the hatchet more than once because it's too strong and it will actually destroy it and you won't get your uh, coconut fibers. And like I said, these are great for starting fires. This is what you need to start fire. Now, speaking of which, the reason why we do that is because we don't have nothing to create this fire, so we actually got to go inside of our inside of our bag hit this here it is our fire stick and now what that's asking for is one large stick which we have right there bang it wants a coconut fiber which we have right here bang and it also wants a small stick which we can create one two three of these pick that up drop that in now we have a fire stick we can come up here we can drop that in and we're, and we're ready to start cooking. Now our thirst is at 24 so we don't, I don't want to drink up all my coconut because it's unnecessary so what I do most of the time is I do have a thirst on so I do have to drink. I'm pretty sure I was no I'm good. I'm good for drink. So now we pull out our knife because that's the way you would get the coconut out of the actual coconut jar and now we have coconut. Now instead of eating it right away by pushing E, I'd push P, put it in my bag now we have a jar, I mean a coconut jar that can take water, take the water of that one, take the water of that one, and now we can cut this one open, and we can use this one to go get salt water to start making salt for when we get some fish in that fish trap, and as well as check the fish trap, T to put that in our bag, and then we can eat that, and now let's just get salt water because we want to get this started, we want some kind of salt to keep the balance going, while we're down here we can check on our trap, there's salt being picked up in there, and we're at 10%, so we have a fish already. As I said, waist high, and if we wanted to, we could get all the fish because we still have everything on us. We don't have to swim. We don't have to take two at a time and kill our breath going back and forth. We are coming for this guy. We will be coming for him. We just don't technically need him yet, and we want to get established. And certain things you don't want to waste your energy on doing and get tired and be behind on another project. So with the salt water, we would place it there. Get our fire starter stick out and keep it and keep an eye on it. Now, one thing I definitely say is keep an eye on it because it goes down very fast. The other thing about cooking with these campfires, the bigger the fire, the faster things move. Now, this has a percentage of zero salt water. It's going to move up. By the time it gets to 100%, it's just going to stay 100% salt. And then we're going to go take it out and salt our food. Now, now that we have that going on and we got our fire, we got our salt cooking. We know we're getting fish. We know when it turns nighttime that we got an opportunity to get some seagulls. What I would say we would do right now is just make a little hut. In my series, I'm building. I build bases, and I for some reason couldn't find a hut. I don't know why, but go to build to make a quick little shelter, and I would say primitive shelter. Uh, since we already have the palms, let's go with the palms. What's this? Uh, palm shelter, banana shelter. No, let's go with the easy one. We don't want to waste no palms unnecessary. We can make two. We can put down two. Let's put down two. Let's kind of put this shelter, though, like somewhere within the midst of the fire so that we can prevent. Ooh, no, we can't do that yet. We need to pick this up, this up, this up, this up, this up. These things actually get a little bit stuck in your crafting. That up. And then let's see if we can drop this building down. All right, let's go with the cheapest one possible. You don't necessarily have to. I did because I just thought it would make sense for this. So now we have that shelter down. It should be able to... No, it's not nowhere near. 
Uh, we're gonna have to lay that as close to the fire as we can. So we want a long stick, a small stick, and two palm fronds. Well, I know we have at least, yeah, we got two. One, two. And this is all from one uh, palm tree. A long stick and then a small stick. I think we have the small sticks on us. Was it one long stick or two? No, it was just one long. That's a fire stick? Yeah, it's a fire stick. Mm, it looks like we're cutting down another tree, guys. Yeah, you can go. You don't bear fruit. Where is that at? There you are. Where is my... Oh, uh, come on, hatchet. Ah, there we go. I was playing games with me for a second. Let's get you up. Let's get you up. Oh, I only needed one. There we go. Look at us. And eight hammerings. I'm pretty sure our salt should be almost done. Which means we can go grab a fish and start cooking that up. No, it's not done. I was lied to by myself. Let's see if we can put you back away up here. Get you over here. Get you over there. And no, let's get you down in here. Add some more sticks to the fire. Keep that fire going. Um, we could probably use you. Oh, a little smoking action going. So, okay, so now we have all this. Let's see. Can we. Is this just the way it goes? It's, yeah, this is the shelter. This is the way it goes. All right. All right, so we want to drop this. Second thing. So now we have our shelter. We have our fish trap. We got our salt cooking. I would personally say I would try to get myself some arrows now. And after I make my air, my bow and arrow, I'd make my smoker because that's what's going to allow my food to last longer. I don't normally cook my food. I normally would cook my water and the salt so that I can salt my food. The only food I really cook would be the seagulls. So I would say my bow and arrow would be next of importance, my bow and my arrows. And then I would make a smoker and that concludes your first day. So let's get this uh, tree knocked down to get a, to get a bow going. Sure, we should be close to being done. Yeah, you're almost done. Okay, so now we get to craft the bow. Oh, that's recipes. We don't want recipes. So it takes stick and rope. So let's drop that there. And it'll put the stick in there. And the one thing we need now is one rope and five knives. So how we make rope is we go back into our crafting. We look at the small thing down here. And it says if you look on underneath rope, three coconut fibers. Three coconut fibers will make us one rope, so that's one. And now we need three of these. And there we go, that's our rope. Throw a rope on there. We get our knife out. Knife that five times. Now we're ready for seagulls. Put that in our bag. Now we want, then this all depends on how many seagulls you want and how good of a shot you are. See, that's highlighted. So we can actually fast grab that. But I'm going to make, let's say, six. We'll shoot down six arrows, make sure we can eat good. And, uh, yeah, let's get that. Now, we're gonna need, now we got six of these little sticks. I mean, six of these here. We're going to need fire sticks, which two of these will help. I'm pretty sure our salt's done. We'll get to that in a second, but we're gonna want to cut this up because night comes quicker than what you think when you're not paying attention in this game. We want to be prepared. There we go. Let's get all six of these up. Pretty sure we have the six feathers on us as well to be able to make these. One, 
Now our feathers, we got seven all. Put them in extra. Now we'll save it. And the best part of both the seagulls is they're an investment. Every time you kill them, to eat them, they'll give you off. They'll give off more feathers. So sooner or later, you'll have more feathers than what you need, and lots of seagulls to eat. And your food will stay balanced. So now we just gotta knife this up a few times. I probably shouldn't be wasting that fire there, but I really like to get this done. I don't trust when the night comes. And we got that. Five knifings will get us out of the habit for the last ones. Pick those up, put them in their bags. I hate the uh, the hitbox on these, the pickup box on these. They're so hard to pick up, especially at almost probably better at night. To be honest, I don't know. But yeah, so now we got that done. We got our salt, so let's just pick that salt up off of there. Put that over here. Let's see, do we have any? We want some sticks. Hopefully that fire doesn't go before we can keep that spire going because we want to take that uh what's that called again we want to get that fish out of there start cooking him up so that we have some kind of a haul oh, perfect but will these ones go i'm pretty sure we need fire sticks let's see no, need, need fire sticks and do not drop stuff directly under your feet you will start flying or hovering sounds fun but it's a little bit of a nuisance when you're in a rush We save it, yeah. We save the fire, even though it's wet. All right, can we get these large sticks on there? Yeah, we can. How about you? Yeah, so we got our big campfire. So now we just go here and check our fish trap. How many fish do we have on? Not only two, but we'll take them. And this is when we want to get this guy because we want to cook our foods. Uh, Yeah, I'm sorry guys, turn away. Okay, thousand for that. Probably gonna get tired hitting him. Alright, so can we pick up all of that here? Yeah, we got a shell, that was the main part. And some meat. Some meat, yeah, we got the meat. Alright, so we got the turtle, we got a shell, we got the meat. Right now we're just going to cook up one piece of meat, one piece of fish, and then we're going to try to make sure we get the smoker so that, or the uh, dryer so we don't have to worry about it going bad so fast. And that's the other uh, luxury to have in the dryer. So that's going to cook theirs at 0%. When they get to 100, they'll be cooked. Now you can overcook them or you can burn them. Neither one of them are good things to do. We're just going to drop this here. It's not like we have a storage yet. We could make a storage, but I, I'd say wait. I don't think anything's going anywhere. Let's just drop all of our food. Let's drop our turtle shell. Oh man, we can't drop it in the fryer. Let's get you up out of there. All right, and we'll keep our feathers on us because that don't weigh too much. We'll drop this rock. That's not how that works. We'll drop that rock because it doesn't matter to us. And we'll keep those on us. So we got that going for us. I think we need another. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we can sell it. There we go. So we need another cup of water for our other fish. So we'll just drop this back into the water after we oh, need to go further. There we go. Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah, you're good. And let's just drop this on here. So we'll leave that there, and what we'll do now is we want to work on getting that dryer. As you can tell, it looks like the sun is starting to shade away, so we just want to get the dryer and wait for those seagulls. And I think we pretty much got everything for how to survive day one and keep trucking. There's that long stick, three small sticks, hammer nine times. Of course you would. Yeah. Hammering is a must, I guess. A small stick. Now we could 
do things such like this and break up a long stick to get some small sticks but I never advise it when you have this much trees around because I mean you're gonna get both of them and there's no point you're always gonna need every type of stick so rather than just creating them when you don't have to ooh, they just backfired on me they heard me say that and then said nah we're gonna shame you but either way you're always gonna get the sticks that the trees produce so just let them produce the sticks first before you uh, decide you want to knock down a tree or break down a trunk or a thick branch for something that's unnecessary when there's a tree that's going to give you small sticks anyways. Two, three, get that him. Where's my hammer? Uh, one slot. Alright, so that's done there. And now we can take our meat, put that on there, put that on there. Oh, okay, put that one on there. And that one on there. Now the last thing where well, we have this, we have that, we have we have everything going that we need, our fish trap out there, we're just waiting for seagulls. But we're not even stressing the seagull point portion because we have you know land meat from the turtles up there. And there you go, the fish is done. We have our salmon cooked and our raw meat still going. Oh shoot, that's all we meant to do. But, uh, have our raw meat going. Alright, so what we're gonna do right now is go into this jungle and see if we can find any kind of uh, fruit, aka vitamin C in this game to survive on. So we have a banana tree right in front of us, but they're small bananas, babies. We can't do nothing with those yet. We do have uh, coconuts there, but I'm just going to go in, take a look, and I'll bring you back when we get close to some kind of vegetation. Don't cut off the uh, ones that have small ones, because then your food's gone. All right, we'll bring you back when we find something. Oh, coconut on the ground, we'll take that. Uh, so I'm just bringing you back here. We're still running around. What we're in search for, what I would like to find, is a papaya. So from what I noticed, one papaya almost fills your whole food in there. And from what I'm getting also as well that I wanted to mention is I think there's some sort of like vegetation seizing in here because certain times all of them will be on the ground and then as it's going by, like this plant is a papaya tree. We're seeing no papayas. But give it a few days, and I think it'll come back. I mean, end game days. But uh, yeah, we'll bring it back. I just wanted to mention that. Mm. Man, it's gone bad. Got to these too late. Mm. Oh, found another coconut. So there must be some. I think they already roll up into the ocean. Where did they come off of you? No, they're still button. Alright, keep trucking. Alright, so after some hard fought searching, we did find the papaya, so we're definitely going to pick those up. We want those. Put those in the bag, those in the bag. And those are going directly on our smoker. Make sure those last forever. Those, I think, personally are the best for vitamin C. And it's like having those, one of those, one one fish and one land food always keeps your balance. So we're going to head back to base. I'll meet you there. I don't want to have you run through the jungle aimlessly with me. We'll meet you at a little ground spot and uh, we'll continue on. All right, so we're back to base. And what I have is my papa. Oh, my fire burnt out before I put more back on it. So we'll have to cook that fire up before it's too late. Um, so yeah, we're back to base. We're going to take our papayas. That's priority right now. And we're going to stick that on our drying rack. We want, we want that to dry. Why won't you stick on our drying rack? Why can't I dry out? What's going on? Uh, that's what happened. I got so excited. Didn't notice they were young raw papayas. Wonder what happened if you eat it. Oh, we're still good to go. 
So we can't dry them up, but we can definitely eat them. I mean, they give a decent sense of uh, vitamin C. So I guess we can eat them, but we won't be able to dry them out. I should have looked at it. I would probably would have left them on for a little bit longer because, like I said, the papayas, they give out great vitamin C. So we're going to have to get this fire going. We have this up. We got our, we got our fruit. We got everything we need to survive. And keep in mind, and with that, with saying that, that these that these trees, it was saying that with these trees, the ones with fruits on them, it's almost as if there's a season. So every now and again, they'll come in, they'll ripen in like regular fruit. They'll just drop off the tree, and it's for yours for the picking to pick it up. Or you can chop chop down the tree if they're up there and they're ripe, and it'll still drop. Um, I just say make sure you come at the right time. Where we're already playing on this map and went through a few days, vegetables were. Or, uh, the vegetation was starting to drop, so that's probably why we were limited in the search and why we found raw papayas and got excited because it was an extensive search. But with that being said, I'm just going to cut the, um, cut up some wood, put the campfire on. And as far as surviving day one, you shouldn't have no problems other than that. The last thing I would say make would be, well, last two things I would say to make if you're trying to balance so just eating and living would be this water catcher, and I'd actually put that right, no, I can't, they wouldn't let me, but I put that there, the water catcher, and from my experience, if you don't have the, uh, like I said, if you don't have the jar, uh, let's not make that one, except for seeing a banana tree in there, that's not coming back to life ever, <laughs> um, if you don't have, a, like, a jar or a bucket, I would honestly say make, I'm, just, I'm I'm making two, I'd almost even say make three. Like it's that extensive, but if you have a bucket or, or a cooking pot, it should be fine. But just make these here, along with the water catcher, and you should be fine. I'm going to make those real quick, cut the camera, because you're not going to need to see me doing all the wood chopping. I'm going to chop up some wood to get that done, get these two done, plus a banana tree, as well as... Um, Get the campfire back on to cook up the meat so we can eat and we'll call it a show all right we'll be, i'll be back all right so we're back and like i said nighttime comes pretty fast there's the moon it's the rest of us and this is why we need to try to move fast and get things done because that water catcher we want to make sure it's catching water we're definitely going to need water so that's eight hammers on this will give us a rain catcher so if it rains we'll be able to get a sip here uh this is our water from our coconut we're at 27 thirst i don't even feel like drinking that uh let's see so no that's completely full i think is it let's find out no it's not so we can there we go so we can definitely take this one and cut it open that one we can satisfy our thirst with that get us down to 18 cut these two open Put them underneath the dew catcher for some water for when we wake up. And I know you hear the seagull, seagulls in the background. We're going to go shoot a few of those just to let you see that that's pretty much what you do with them. They're not hired. They're not going to fight you back. But, uh, yeah, so we'll bring you back as soon as we're done hammering up this uh, the dew catchers and getting the, banana, the palm leaf short or banana palms. Cool. All right. So all right. So we got the palms here. That's one. And that's one. We'll drop these down here. And what we need is eight hammerings. And putting that jar down. And like I said, once this is once they're both complete, we'll bring you back. So we got those two done. Put the coconuts under there. Just push E to pick up. Left click to drop them. And overnight you'll get a little bit of water dew in there. Like I said, get the cooking pot in the, or the bucket and you'll do better. And now, so we do have it. We got to put our coconuts down. Sheesh. Can't pick those guys up with all that stuff in our pockets. And even this, we got to put our, uh, I guess we'll eat it. Well, we got to put our stuff on the dirty floor like savages so we're going to take the bow we put that in hand and then it automatically equips the arrow and this is a good spot because you're literally right by these guys and goes one 
There goes dinner. There goes supper. And a snack. And now all we do, now what I, like I said in my regular season, the one I'm currently recording, always, always, always pull a, put a mallet in your hand because just because you come over and they run away doesn't mean they stay away. Those guys are bold enough that they come back. Oh, I missed them. Which one? Where are you? And then there we go. We get a second guy. And that's what we do when we run out of arrows. And I'm pretty sure you can do it with without shooting any of them. Just run on here. They'll come back bold, looking for their home or the rock to perch on. And you're able to shoot them. And yes, you do get arrows back until they break, which is another luxury. So, like I said, it's an investment. Once they break, you'll have the feathers from them. Now, all we're going to do right now is just cut them up and put them on the fire. And that's how you survive eating, stay eating, and never have to worry about, you know, food being a crisis again. Making sure you stay on top of the different food groups. So, we have our land food. We also have our turtles that were land food. And turtles are very, very, very limited. Once they're gone, they're gone. Crabs, once they're gone, they're gone. Um, the seagulls are always here. They're repetitive. The fish traps are always there. They're repetitive. And they continue to come back. As you can tell, the seagulls are over there again. If we go check our fish trap, we're going to find, once again, fish in there. Only 10%. But we just got finished taking some fish out. So, that's going to do it. That's all we need. Normally, I cut these up and show you how much feathers, but you can watch my series on, you know, Escaping the Pacific. But that's all we need. That's all we can do. That's surviving. That's how you're going to eat. That's how you're going to have no problems throughout the duration of your game gameplay. You should be able to do this on any island. Any island that doesn't have some vegetable, I mean, some, some vegetation, don't stay on it. If there's no trees, and I mean coconuts and bananas, do not stay on it. You cannot survive. It's not meant for you to survive. It's meant for you to grab whatever trinkets is on it and leave. But that's going to do it. That's Butch telling you how we survived this. And uh, two fingers. Peace. Ooh.